We begin our day early, departing Grove City before sunrise for the hour drive north just over the Ohio border to Conneaut. Our goal for today is to chase a southbound on the Bessemer and Lake Erie, which runs from the docks in Conneaut to the yard in North Bessemer, where the Union Railroad takes the cars to steel mills east of Pittsburgh. There's not much public access to the docks, so we wait at the old Main Street Bridge over the Conneaut Creek. Sometimes the loads depart south in the morning, other times in the afternoon, so as the old rail fan saying goes, hurry up and wait. But with the sun not yet above the trees, we were perfectly fine with waiting. It's easy to tell what commodity passes through here, taconite pellets that leaked from old hopper cars lined much of the right-of-way. New train sets of 40-foot hoppers came online this year, phasing out most of the old cars exceeding 40 years of age. The history of the Bessemer and Lake Erie dates back to 1865, when the first coal routes were chartered in this region. In 1897, Andrew Carnegie unified the routes into one for steel production. Since then, thousands of carloads of iron ore have made the trip from Conneaut to the U.S. Steel Edgar Thompson Works in Braddock. The ore is mined and processed into pellets in the Mesabi Range in northeastern Minnesota, then shipped by rail to ports along Lake Superior for transloading onto boats over the Great Lakes. For many years, this was done in tandem by the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range Railway, the Great Lakes Fleet, and the Bessemer and Lake Erie. While owners of these companies have changed over the years, Canadian National completed acquisition on May 10, 2004. One wouldn't even notice the change until 2015, when several of the orange Bessemer locomotives were displaced into the Iron Range in parts of the Midwest, which happened even though this line is isolated from the rest of the Canadian National System. While we were waiting, Norfolk Southern train 14M crosses on the Lake Erie District. Word on the street is this bridge is up for replacement. A forecast of clear skies and peaking fall foliage brought some chasers as far away as Indiana and Illinois. The Bessemer is one of the biggest attractions for rail fans in this region because you are guaranteed older EMD power and locations with classic searchlight signals several of which we encounter on our chase. Several fishermen showed up along the riverbank before the dozen of us gathered on the bridge, our catch of the day finally emerges. A red nose SD-60 and a couple of Illinois Central SD-70s for a combined total of 11,800 horsepower, beginning to build the outbound train. The Illinois Central has been part of CN since 1998, and over 20 years later, several of the locomotives still wear their original paint, save for the yellow frame stripe and steps, and the CN noodle added to the rear nose of the 1022. Watch the sanders kick in as they start their shove, which helps the wheels maintain traction, preventing them from slipping. With 95 loads today, the Sanders would stay activated for several miles to assist the 300-foot climb out of Conneaut to Albion. 20 minutes later, the U-702 is finally ready to head south with their train at 10.45.
The tracks turn east as they cross into Pennsylvania, continuing their assault up the 1% grade at Pond Road in West Springfield. Brilliant fall colors greet us at the Route 215 road crossing below East Springfield as they creep along with the sanders still activated. Tracks turn back south at Cranesville below CE, where the Erie sub splits off to Girard. They continue on the main today, bypassing what was once a busy yard on the left, now occasionally used for excess tonnage, some local traffic or maintenance away storage, but it was empty today. It's a pretty easy chase to hear, but below Albion, signaled CTC territory begins and the track speed jumps to 35 miles per hour. Twelve miles south, the train roars through the crossings in Conneautville, giving decent throttle for the half a percent grade. All of us crammed on the shoulder of the US 322 overpass for a vantage of the Hartstown Swamp as the train approaches the hotbox detector at milepost 97.1. There was once another main track to the right of the code line that split away further north. Both tracks passed directly through the Pima Tuning Swamp before joining back together on the other side.
dynamic brakes begin to slow the train as they drop down the grade into Sandy, better known as KO Junction, where behind us, the Greenville sub splits from the Bessemer sub. Today, the train will continue down the Kremis Osgood cutoff, bypassing the town of Greenville, Shenango Yard, and the at grade crossing of the NS Meadville line. Greenville was once a major location on the Bessemer and Lake Erie, hosting a roundhouse and locomotive shops. Completed in 1902, the KO line shaved 3.1 miles off of the old line lessening the grade by running at a higher elevation made possible by the 1,724-foot-long viaduct over the Little Shenango River at Osgood. By contrast, the old line first descends to river grade at Greenville with a much steeper, winding climb to Kremis. Back at KY, what looked like solid ground ended up being a deep swamp next to the tracks. Unfortunately, one of the chasers stepped and fell waist deep, so I stayed back and held my camera above the brush the best I could. After they pass, it was down to Kremis for a recrew. The new crew will take the train all the way south to North Bessemer. Many of the chasers gathered by the road crossing, but we preferred a view from further away with a perfect backdrop of peak fall colors. We skipped 25 miles ahead to the signal bridge in Branchton. Dynamic brake fans whine as they descend the 1% grade.
further south near Butler, they pass under this late 50s era cantilever at Oneida. The sky clouding up, we decided to end the chase here and head back north towards Grove City with the possibility that a crew would take a local south out of Greenville with a set of Bessemer locomotives. Unfortunately, that never came to fruition, but maybe next time we'll catch some orange and explore more locations further south on the railroad. I hope you enjoyed this chase of the ore down the Bessemer and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and a special thanks to those that contributed photos for this video. Links to more of their railroad photographs can be found in the description below.